Hi everyone, we're continuing with our Chapter 4 homework. Here goes. Superman's flying upward by applying his upward flying force of 1640 newtons. If Superman is accelerated upward at a rate of 6.75 meters per second squared, what's the mass of Superman? And then, what is his weight in pounds? And ignore any additional friction forces on the Man of Steel. So here we have Superman. And we're going to have him have some legs, because that's always handy for Superman. He's got his fist of flying, and then we're going to give him a cape, because caped superheroes always need capes. So he's going to have a force up of uh, 1640 newtons. Now, um, he's going to be accelerated upward with at a rate of 6.75 meters per second squared. And we want to know his mass. Mass is question mark. Now, you might look at this and go, hey, I know force, I know acceleration, mass is easy. But this gets a little tricky because there's a force up, but there's also a force down on him. What's the force down that's not mentioned in the problem? Yeah, gravity. He is flying upward under the influence of the gravitational force pulling him downward. And before we can use F equals MA, remember it is the net force that is going to make a mass accelerate. So we have to find that net force. I am going to call everything that is up a positive direction, and I'm going to call down a negative direction, so I'm going to write my equation that looks like this. If my equation is net force is what is going to make the mass accelerate, the up force minus the force of gravity, and the reason it has a negative sign is because it's pushing in, or pulling in the opposite direction, is going to make the mass accelerate. My force up, we know, is 1640 newtons. Force of gravity, I don't know, but I do know the force of gravity is mass times the acceleration of gravity. Equals mass, the mass of the man of steel, times the rate of acceleration, and the rate of acceleration we're told right here is 6.75 meters per second squared. I do know the acceleration of gravity here, and I'm just going to recopy this one more time down so that I have everything, all of my variables filled in as much as possible. So mass times 9.80 meters per second squared equals mass times 6.75 meters per second squared. Now I'm looking for mass. We want to know the mass of Superman. That's my big question mark. I have mass in two places. I have to get them both on the same side. How do I combine like masses or combine like terms? I can add them because this is a subtraction. To get this on this side, I am going to add mass times 9.8 meters per second squared to both sides. If I do that to one side and I do it to the other, here's what's going to occur. These two are going to cancel, and I'm going to end up with 1640 newtons is going to be equal to this plus this, which is going to be mass of, and I'm going to write it out real carefully because I don't want to lose anybody here, 6.7 meters per second squared plus 9.8 meters per second squared times mass. I almost forgot my m. So combine like terms, 6.75, I get to grab a calculator, 6.75 plus 9.8. I'm going to end up with mass times 16.6, when I come round it to three sig figs, 1640 newtons, or mass, I'm going to divide both sides by 16.6. Uh, so 1640 divided by 16.6, mass I get 98.8 kilograms. That's what I get for the mass of Superman. Now, they want to know what is his weight in pounds. How the heck do I go from this to weight in pounds? Well, I'm going to do a conversion. I'm going to carve out a little space over here. I look on my conversion sheet, and it says if you're going to go from pounds to kilograms, 
I can just set this up. I've got 98.8 kilograms and I can set up a little TIE fighter, get rid of kilograms, go two pounds. One pound is equivalent to 0 0.45359 kilograms. I'm running out of room. Um, and when I do the math, so divide by 0.54539, I end up with the weight of Superman as 218 pounds, just about 218 pounds for, kilogram, for Superman. All right, onward, let's do another one. A model rocket is in mid-flight. It has a mass of 50.8 kilograms, and the rocket is accelerating upward at a rate of 1.4 meters per second squared. What's the strength of the rocket engines that are used to accelerate it upward? So we want to know a force. Forces are question mark. That's what we want to know. Let's draw our picture so we can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. I've got my little rocket engine. Um, it has a mass of 50.8 kilograms, so it's a pretty hefty toy rocket. It's accelerated upward at 1.4 meters per second squared. It, we want to know the strength of the rocket engines used to accelerate it upward, so we have a force up. And is that the only force acting on my rocket? It's not. There is also a force down, and that's the force of gravity. And so we want to know what the force up, that's my unknown, that's the thing we're asking for. What's the strength of the rockets used to accelerate it upward? And what can we do with Newton's law? Well, Newton's second law, we know it is the net force that is going to make a mass accelerate. What's the net force? It's the sum of these two. So it is going to be the force up minus the force of gravity. And why is it minus? Because it's in the opposite direction. It's pulling it down is going to make the mass accelerate. So the force up minus the force of gravity, and we know force of gravity is mass times acceleration of gravity, is going to make that mass accelerate. Force up we don't know. Mass is 50.8 kilograms. We were told mass right here. Acceleration of gravity is our old friend, 9.8 meters per second squared. Mass is 50.8 kilograms, and we're told this object is accelerating at 1.4 meters per second squared. So force up minus, all right, calculator time, 50.8 times 9.8. So all of this is 498 kilogram meters per second squared is Newtons. The other side, 50.8 times 1.4, so 71.1 newtons. And we got to get force up alone. How do we get all these newtons together? Well, I'm going to add 498 to both sides. That's how I'm going to get rid of it on this side. These are going to cancel, so force up is going to be 71.1 plus 498. And when I do the math, I end up with 569 newtons. That's going to be the force upward. Okay, let's see how we're doing. That was 9. We should have enough time in this video to do at least one more. Football punter accelerates a football from rest to a speed of 20 meters per second during the time in which his toe is in contact with the ball about point one seconds. The football has a mass of 0.5 kilograms. What is the average force exerted on the ball by the punter's foot? Give the answer in pounds. Oh my goodness me. Well, let's take a look at what we have. Now, first and foremost, what do we know? We know a whole bunch of things that says, now first off, these are problems where forces are mixed with kinematics. So we have to go back and use some of those kinematics equations from previous chapters. So the ball is accelerated from rest. So we know the original velocity of the ball is zero. It has a final velocity of 20 meters per second. And the time of all of this event is 0.1 second. 
um, and we want to know the rate of acceleration. So before we get into the forces, let's calculate, let's find the acceleration. Look at your kinematics equations. Which equation is going to have all that in it? I think I'm going to choose Vf is Vo plus At. Original velocity is zero, so that's going to go away. Acceleration is going to be final velocity divided by time, or 20 meters per second divided by 0 0.100 seconds. So 20 divided by 0.1, I get an acceleration of 200 meters per second divided by seconds, meters per second squared. So that's my rate of acceleration. Now, let's continue. If the football has a mass of 0.5 kilograms, what is the average force exerted on the ball? Well, force is going to be mass times acceleration. The mass of the ball is 0 0.500 kilograms and is accelerated at a rate of 200 meters per second squared. So the force exerted on the ball times 0.5 I am going to end up with do, 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 100 newtons. And the question then says, convert the answer to pounds. Oh my goodness, aren't they ever happy? OK, there are 2.2 pounds per kilogram. I better look that up so I'm not making stuff up. Um, oh, but we're going to newtons. Let's see, there is do, 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 do. We're going from pounds to do, do, do. I'm looking at my conversion sheet. Um, newtons to pounds, newtons to pounds, newtons to pounds. There are 4.45 newtons to one pound. There we go. So let's divide that through. Divide by 4.45. And I end up with a force of 22.5 pounds. OK, cool beans. I'm just going to check if I have time for one more problem. Probably not. We're going to stop here, and we'll do some more next time. All right, see you then. Bye-bye.